So uh, this is from Variety.com, um, and it's entitled, Patrick Stewart Explains Why Watching the Picard Finale Was So Emotional, Teases Star Trek Return. All right. It says, spoiler alert, it's about uh, the series finale for Picard, so be ready. <laughs> <laughs> when, when Patrick Stewart first met with producers Alex Kurtzman and Akiva Goldsman in 2017 to discuss the possibility of returning to play Jean-Luc Picard again on a new Star Trek series, Stewart famously did so as a courtesy to explain that he had absolutely no interest in revisiting the world of Star Trek The Next Generation. Yes. I explained to them all those elements. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I explained to them all those elements of next generation which belong in next generation <laughs> and why I didn't want to go near them again, Stuart told Variety in a January 2020 cover story. When the producers noted that the show could show a much different Picard, one who changed over two decades since the events of the final TNG movie, 2002 Star Trek Nemesis, Stuart became intrigued and signed on to do three seasons of Star Trek Picard. But without the rest of the TNG cast. That's where the plot thickens. Basically, they gave him kind of their assurances that they're not going to be doing uh, like a TNG reunion, right? Right. So right. And I was waiting for your commitment, Mohammed, in on the accent. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I didn't want to say David from the UK and be like, that is not a British accent at all. Like, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You're good. While a few Trek alumni did pop up on Picard, he's referring to seasons one and two. However, it wasn't until season three that Stewart was finally convinced that it was time to bring back the full cast of the next generation. Jonathan Frakes is Riker, Brent Spiner's data. LeVar Burton's Jordy, Marina Sirtis's Troy, Michael Dorn's Wharf, and crucially, Gates McFadden's Crusher, Picard's on again, off again, unrequited love. Led by executive producer Terry Metalis, season three of Picard painstakingly reunites the TNG cast around a story involving Picard and Crusher's adult son, Jack, played by Ed Spilliers. And by the way, who will be at Star Trek Las Vegas? This was just announced. Mm -hmm. As of today, yeah, good knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, who was born with a strain of rogue Borg DNA, spoiler alert, <laughs> his father unwittingly passed down to him. That DNA leads to an all-stops-out cinematic climax in which the TNG crew is all that stands between the Borg and the total assimilation of Earth, the Federation, and the rest of the galaxy. So, this is not a lot of faith the rest of the galaxy can find This is all. a really long article, but if mm -hmm. you... I don't know. Do you want to skip down to some of my highlights? Yeah. Okay. So the bold that starts with Terry Metalis has talked about. If you scroll down a little bit. Um, All right. It's, like, there it is. Terry it's the point below. Yeah, here. Okay. Terry Metalis has talked about wanting to do a Star Trek Legacy spinoff series. Ed Spilliers told me he would love to continue playing Jack. And it sounds like you'd be interested in returning as well. Now, this is uh, Patrick Stewart, I'm assuming, replying. Or is it, or who is replying here? Is this, uh, who's actually saying um, this? this? is it's Patrick Stewart. It's Patrick it, is, Stewart. it is Patrick. Okay, I just want to make sure. Patrick Stewart. Yes. The circumstances, as it was with Picard, would be the important factor in all of that. But certainly, there's a wonderful future for Ed there. I'm sure of it. And if I can occasionally crop up to offer a little bit of comedy myself, then I shall be happy to do that. I love that line. I remember reading that earlier. <laughs> wow. That's, That's pretty so big. The comedic relief is, is Patrick Stewart. <laughs> so Picard's lack of family and his disinterest in children was there from the very first episode of the series. So what did it mean for you to be able to explore Picard as a father in such a robust way? So as Patrick Stewart replies, I think that the relationship between Dr. Crusher and Picard was what mattered most in this. I read several accounts of parents who only learned that they were parents when the child was quite adult. What it produced in... And John Luke was fu was fury with, I nearly said Gates, with Dr. Crusher, because she had not told him. He had not pursued family life as an essential part of his own life. Nevertheless, when the thing happened, he was cut out of it. He was isolated. I think that was the toughest thing for him to swallow, that there had been 20 odd years of life of his only son, and he had not known about it at all. Those 20 years were the years in which he had wandered through being promoted to an admiral, the desk job he had, 
retiring, becoming a lecturer and a winemaker, all of these things became irrelevant as he dealt with a critical situation that was building up around the people he cared about so deeply. So can um, we just say how sneaky this is that Patrick Stewart is sliding in, oh, you know, I might I might not be done acting in Star Trek. When this was supposed to be the swan song, this is yeah. it. What a, somehow, some way, it seems like he's been like converted to where well, like, well, this was kind of Comic-Con. fun. Maybe I'll keep doing it. Yeah, starting at the New York Comic Con panel, he was like, I don't know, maybe I like it doesn't <laughs> have to be the end. And now it's like getting more specific with like he, he's interested in comedic bits. Um, yeah, so super fascinating. And then if you scroll down a little more, there was a part I really loved because I just I do not know Shakespeare that well, and they really highlight. I so I missed this amazing reference in the last in the scene at Guinan's Bar. But it's where it starts with "I love Picard's toast at Guinan's Bar," oh, in yeah. bold. Yeah. Remember that thing. All right. Well, let's uh, take a look at that, since it comes so highly recommended. I mean, what we what we <laughs> skipped was like there was a question mark whether they would show like more of a question mark about what would happen with Picard and Crusher next, but yeah. he mm-hmm. won't say what they changed it from. So. Oh yeah, I remember reading that. So uh, the interviewer says, I left Picard's toast to, at Guinan's bar at the end when he quotes mm-hmm. Brutus's speech from Julius Caesar. How did that come about? I can't recall whose actual idea it was that we should return to Picard and Shakespeare at the very end. But I've been looking at quite a lot of Shakespeare because it's been, along with Star Trek, the most important creative force in my life. And I would had some ideas about another Shakespeare involvement down the road. I've been remembering my most recent experiences, particularly, and it was then that, quote, there is a tide in the affairs of men suddenly hit mm. me as being very pertinent to what we were shooting. Uh, do we uh, keep going or stop? Uh, yeah, one more, please. Uh, yeah. Sure. It felt like the, uh, it felt like that was as much Picard talking to, sorry, Patrick talking to his castmates as it was Picard talking to his crewmates. And uh, Patrick responds, mm. both, yes. It had, it had become that increasingly. All the way through Picard, it had that quality about it. We were communicating again in our fictional world and enjoying it immensely. Being cast back in 1987 was the most significant thing that ever happened to me, professionally anyway, because it changed everything. Having the opportunity to experience something like this and then to repeat it has been beautiful. I want to get together again with them as soon as possible. See, when I hear things like it changed everything, Mm -hmm. and when I hear things like... uh, having the opportunity to experience something like this and then repeat it, to be honest, I'm thinking financially. Because when there's an actor who's like a Shakespeare actor who's working his tail off for 20, (laughs) 25 years, and then he says a a certain role changes everything, what that means is now he's got a completely different life. Well, but also like It's a completely different lifestyle, yeah. That's true too, yeah. Well, and I, and I think going in, because you know how actors always want to find that new role to make it new, something that challenges them, that challenges that acting muscle. So going in, I can see why he would want maybe initially say, well, this is going to be my last go of a card because I've been there, I've done that. But then being in it and playing with all of his old friends again, it may have re-sparked, you know, that that uh, something that he left behind, which which is kind of awesome. I think it's pretty awesome. Maybe Speaking it'll be of cyclical which, and he'll come back now in like new X Men movies too. <laughs> Buster uh, that would be again. great. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Speaking <laughs> of which, uh, this thing concludes. This article concludes with uh, the questioner saying, "Finally, that concluding shot of you all playing mm-hmm. poker through the credits oh, was yeah. that a real game?" Uh, Stewart replies, "Yes, that was a real game." Questioner says, so who won? And he says, I think I won. I mean, we were being so relaxed about it. And it was, but it was a real round of cards. Okay. So That's really cool. I love, love that. that. Love yeah. that. And I love Terry Metallus in the other interviews where he said, like, that is definitely something that could be a bonus feature on DVDs. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah. Is that yeah. in this screen rant article here? Uh, Star Trek Picard showrunner Terry Metalis discusses the season three finale, Star Trek Legacy, 
and reveals what was cut from Picard's ending. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a moment, uh, right after these messages. We can do the speech from uh, Julius Caesar. <laughs> we don't have messages. Friends, Romans, and countrymen, <laughs> lend your ears. I come I to come bury to Caesar, Caesar, not wait, to praise friends, him. Friends, 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 after them, but wait, the good yeah. often, good often turned, turned with their, their bones. bones. So let it, so be, let with it be with Caesar. <laughs> the noble Brutus had told you Caesar was ambitious, but it was a grievous fault, and grievously has Caesar answered it. All right, yes, bet, Brutus yeah. was an honorable man. That's I comes up next. He said, "I couldn't hear on the leave of Brutus and the rest. For Brutus is an honorable man, so are they all, all honorable men?" <laughs> <I just think. laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. I had to memorize that in tenth grade. <laughs> Me too. Tenth grade. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And and I still remember most of it eight years later. <laughs> I'm nine years. Later. <laughs> Nine years for you. <laughs> oh, making age jokes is hysterical. Everybody else is like back to track. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's get back on track, everybody. Here we go. Back to one. Uh, hello to Jenny R. Johnson in the live chat. She's also a great artiste. Uh, that's French for artist. <laughs> 